Take a trip through the Lost Library and discover what's available now from yours truly. When their parents are taken captive by a wicked necromancer and his sinister crocodile men, a pack of children from the peaceful land of Aquania must journey across their continent, meeting strange beings and confronting untold terrors in their quest to rescue their families from a witch queen eager to raise a demon lord from his fiery abode. The Young Barbarians, written by your boy Crypto, is available now in both digital and print form on Amazon.com. Published by the fine folks at the Lost Library. And support your boy Crypto by picking up a copy today. Link in the description below. Hello all you beautiful people in Webtown and welcome to Crypto Comics. This is Indie Wednesday. Our day each week when I review one of the many independently published comic books I have purchased off of Indiegogo or Kickstarter. This is the making of Earthworm Jim. See, I tell you that it's when I talk about a comic book, but then right out of the shoot, I'm not gonna talk about a comic book because guess what? I, I didn't get the comic book. I didn't want the Earthworm Jim comic book. I was really interested in how they made the game and how they made the comic. That is uh, much more intriguing to me than the story that would be told. And it's just how my mind works. I'm fascinated to learn things. And, uh, and that's uh, why I purchased this. And guess what? It was only 25 measly bucks for this stunningly, stunningly designed book by Mark Lorenzen and Doug Tenaple. The Making of Doug Tenaple's Earthworm Jim. Launch the Cow, a Tenaple book. Okay, so this is by Doug. Ten apples up on top. Uh, you know, section one, a worm is born. Filled with pictures. Filled with pictures of Doug when he was young. He also created the Neverhood for all of you youngsters out there who might not be familiar with Earthworm Jim. Uh, one of the, you know one of those major properties that is just ripe for a huge return, and I guess it has had a huge return when it comes to comic books because Doug's a millionaire because of comics, because of one comic. It's pretty amazing. It's got this incredible timeline. This, this of course, you know, folds out. Tells you everything you need to know about Doug Liss Ten Apples' career. A good Christian man. You know, hell of a man, to be honest with you. There's things I know that other people don't know that we may have talked about in the past on Crypto Comics, but, you know, we don't, we don't like to harvest drama for views here. We're not into that. Now, my friend Risey Lee, he doesn't really care for Doug Tenapel at all because Doug Tenapel, you know, he would say that, well, Doug Tenapel didn't do crypto right. He, he said he was going to have crypto on his show and help promote his book and get it over. And, and he didn't do that. And so Risey's never forgiven him for that. But I forgive Doug Tenapel. That's fine. Whatever. As long as he uh, keeps doing good works in the world for, for people who need it. Once in a blue moon, we will address an egregious error that uh, has been committed against, uh, well, just a comic book reader by... Really nasty people. And Doug Tenaple is not one of those nasty people. Doug is exactly the opposite of that. Doug Tenaple is the kind of guy who will drop everything he's doing to help a person who's become stranded 100 miles from him and uh, will contribute his money to make sure that person gets somewhere safe. And uh, Doug Tenaple is not necessarily a comic book creator. Doug Tenaple is also a fisher of fanboys, much like Mike S. Miller, much like Jesus Christ was in his day. He was a fisher of men. So, uh, but I digress. You know, we're seeing the evolution here of Peter Puppy. Look at this. Holy cannoli. This is the Sega Genesis. This is the Playmate Toys. This is a Universal Cartoon Studios from 96 and the graphic novel from 2019. So, quite, a, quite the thing here. There's something I like that's in the back. Now, they also talk to a lot of the people that were involved in the creation. Doug interviews them. And all is worth reading. Seriously. All of this is worth reading. No, that's not Mike S. Miller. That's, that's Tommy Tanaka. Keep it going. Full steam. When are we going to get to the part? We're getting closer. We're getting closer. This guy kind of looks like Ricky Berwick, doesn't he? Like, like, this is Ricky's older brother, who's not disabled. Uh, 
It took a team to make Earthworm Jim. Yeah, teamwork is something that's hard to come by. Nowadays, it seems, in the comic industry. Hard to come by. Everyone looking out for themselves. You know, it's true. You can't deny it. A masterpiece in 16-bit. Yeah, Earthworm Jim was a masterpiece. Absolutely phenomenal game. Back in the days, when I was a preteen gamer, as soon as I got a car, I didn't care anymore. No, no thank you. I don't need, I don't need anything. I'll pass. The campaign, you know. A little bit of advice from Douglas to Naple on the campaign here. What I know about campaigns is that the backer will fund a campaign for one of two reasons. They trust the campaign owner, or they love the idea of the thing they are backing. They haven't read the book, so they can only love the idea of the book, not the story itself. I'm not terribly loved by most of my audience, so the book idea was what I had to go with. To make a successful crowdfunding campaign, I try to put the basic idea in the title and just show one iconic image that hammers the idea home. I can see from the campaign analytics who are my lifelong fans and who are new people. I can see what parts of the country donate more to the campaign than others. I can see who is most likely to spread the word about the book. That's a big thing. You know, that was a big thing we did back in the days when uh, the whole independent comic book community got together under that thing called Comicsgate. And uh, it, it, it was a good thing until it was, until it was not, until it was ruined. Until it was divided over and over and over again. Anyway, crowdfunding independent comics may not work next year. It may not work ever again in my life. The market can change overnight. But now my 20-year commitment to comics has been the most stable and the most fun I've ever had. I've never been more satisfied. In short, backers are getting more value by backing my books. I am committed to making this oversized hardbound deluxe edition. And my audience is responding well. I'm always looking for fellow comic lovers who are fanatical about printing quality. The entertainment is on the page, and believe it or not, I'm entertained by this whole process. The whole business is pretty abstract, but I have always believed every story finds its audience. My wish is not for a bigger audience, but for a perfect story. Something that is true and good and beautiful, transcending time and inspiring elevated thought. I'm an entertainer first, and I believe that will naturally bring in an expanding audience. Isn't that the truth? He's not lying. This is about writing characters. And there's the lovely Mrs. Tenaple right there. The woman's a saint for sticking with Doug all these years. Writing Story by Doug Tenaple. I don't love writing stories. I love telling them. Writing is stupid. I sit at this computer and chicken peck a keyboard to try to put lightning in your mind. The writing process is so clunky compared to the transcendent ideas flitted about in any story. Plot has a similar problem. It's a terrible word, that word plot. It sounds like sitting in a toilet, but it's the spine of any story. It must be respected. Like clunking away at the keyboard, plot is an inelegant description of a story. This happens, then that happens, and then this big ending where a character changes by necessity. The reason why it sounds so lame is that a plot isn't the same as a good story. I think that's because real life doesn't sound like a plot. I don't know where the plot of my life is going tomorrow, so it would be weird to read a 3x5 note card dictating those events. The key to a kid's story is to bury the plot. It's there, but you shouldn't be able to see it. Bury a gold bar in your backyard and it's there. It doesn't vanish because it's not visible, but there it is, doing its gold bar thing. The true artistry of making a plot is in how well it is buried. I can deconstruct most stories and write the plot in outline form, but that isn't where the charm and wonder of a story is. Probably like real life, our day-to-day -day experience of going to work, cleaning up after the dog, and ordering lunch is what buries the plot of some of our more epic accomplishments. I've gone over three-act structure so many times I hardly need to repeat it here. But yes, the Earthworm Jim comic follows a three-act structure. The entire book is also the first act of a larger three-act structure that could go from three to five books by design. I write my plots on note cards, organizing them in three acts of a story. I'm an old man, so I enjoy writing on 3x5 cards with an actual Sharpie over doing things digitally. I've done the whole process digitally before, and it sucks. I don't like it, and I don't want to do it that way. You can't make me. It's trash. Instead, I like sitting in the living room with my family walking in and out of the room. I write one line on a note card and put it on the coffee table in a column of other cards. 
At a single glance, I can see all of the story at the same time. I don't have to push a button to see the previous act of cards. I just look. The 3x5 cards are nearly made to be thrown out and replaced or moved to another area. It makes editing easier and more real. The big moments of the story that are the most iconic and hold the spectacle tent up are written first. Big stories require big, obscene moments or the story turns into a low-budget French drama. I could write one of those one day, but it's not what I'm making right now. Once those big moments are figured out, I play Connect the Dots. How do I get from note card 23 in Fresno to note card 30 where he is turned into a woolly mammoth? I fill in the minimal amount of granularity to create a string of cause and effect from start to finish. The rest is just adding a fun skin that feels like real life. By the end of the note card phase, I have a stack of 100 cards. I know the plot works, and I can see a rip-roaring story in that deck. I write the script on the computer and just go through the cards in order, putting them into scenes and writing dialogue along the way. I try to write as fast as I can to put as much on the page before I get bored. If I run into a difficult scene, I might skip ahead and write the ending. The plot on the note cards doesn't lie and doesn't change much, so there's no problem with writing out of order. That chain of necessary events will happen, and I like to stick a good ending to encourage me on some of the more difficult middle scenes. It is rare that I have people edit my scripts. Sometimes my assistant, Mr. Phillips, will read the script and I'll ask him what the story is about. I might ask him if anything was boring or unclear. If it's not boring or unclear, then drawing it into a comic is only going to make it even less boring and more clear. We have written some pages together, where I speak dialogue out loud and I look at his reaction. He doesn't tell me what to write unless I'm really stuck, but I mostly have hired him to sit by me so I won't be distracted and go on social media. It's worth every penny to pay him to babysit me. I know my bad habits so well that it's easy to circumvent myself with some kind of trick. I'm not aware of having a voice because I can't really write in any other voice than my own, so my voice is whatever I come up with. Most of these stories are about the only story I want to write, so they go down a Doug Tenaple shaped track. Readers in my work have made connections and see a clear voice coming out of my stories. So I know there is a voice there, I just don't do it deliberately. Once the script is finished and I'm eager to print it out, I can carve it up into pages and panels and draw right on the page. As you can see by these three stages, I'm breaking up the task of writing across different mediums, probably to prevent boredom. Note cards are on the coffee table in the living room. Writing the script is on the computer in my office. Once it's printed, I can break up the pages using a pencil in a coffee shop or in bed. Just when it gets tedious, I'm on to the next process. Every stage is an excuse to do a little rewrite without going into an official rewriting mode. That's because I hate rewriting, but love fixing my work at each stage. It's another trick I play on myself. There is no editing stage or a rewrite, just going from script to thumbnail with me crossing out one line of dialogue here and there for another. And he does all that without even washing his hands. Can you believe that? Probably took 26 dumps while he was doing that and never washed his hands once. Designing pages. I'm not going to read all this. You have to get this book to, to read it, or I can just, I'll, I'll just wait. Okay? So you can just pause it, right? And then you can read it off the screen. There you go. Sorry, Doug. Don't worry, I don't make enough money on this, Doug. You know, pencils. Yeah, we've seen all this before in Wizard One Half issues, right? Basically. Uh, that's Doug's calendar for making Earthworm Jim launch the cow, September 2019. How about that? Moment in time. I don't see a thing about Ethan Van Skyver on there. Can you believe that? Oh, man. Radka! This is the only person I like involved with the book. Let's be honest. It is a privilege to get to work this hard on an art form as fun as comics. The best way an artist can love an audience is to open his heart and let the ink bleed out. And that is... The making of Earthworm Jim. The video game, the comic, the whole thing. And it came with other stuff too. Check it out. It came with a patch. Isn't that awesome? I like it. It came with uh, a Bigfoot Bill Finger of Poseidon comic book. So, you know, Bill wants to, or excuse me, uh, Doug wants to bait you in and get you to buy his other work. Which would be this, of course, Bigfoot Bill. He's done the second one now. He's done the second Earthworm Jim also now. I have no idea what he's working on now. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. Because I stopped buying crowdfunding comics. Because it's a shit show. This is fun. I'm not going to read it. Maybe we'll look at it someday in the future on Crypto Comics. Probably not. 
What else did it come with? Oh my gosh, Becky, look at his poster. It is so big. Well, this is a giant poster that I've never opened. There we go. There we go. We're seeing what it is now, aren't we, folks? So that, that'll give you the... Let's not damage it too much here. There we go. Look at that. A giant poster, too. In addition to this huge hardbound book with the foil on the cover. Like, totally, totally amazing, right? Foil on the cover. Wow, this is foil. This is like foil. It's pretty cool. What else? What else? What else? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls in the web town. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Create your own blockheads of Earthworm Jim. That's super fun. We've got the prints. Yes, the print. Yeah, look at that. Oh, another, another amazing print. Yeah, you get all this. You get all this for $25. Can you believe that? But wait, there's more. Let's not forget about three packs. What? Of Earthworm Jim Groovy cards. And the stretch goal cards. Tattoo, foil, and lenticular. I've never opened them. I'm going to open them right now. Right here. Crypto Comics. Yeah. Yeah, this is like for all of you who stuck around, you get the bonus. Hmm. Trade cards with your friends at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash EWJ trading cards. That's actually really smart. <laughs> really super smart. There we go. Okay, we got some cards here. Isn't this fun? Isn't this exciting? How about we zoom in? That way you can uh, see a little bit closer, huh? Hmm, Psycho. Oh, that Genesis cover. I like that one. Catherine Garner, the rocket worm. Mike Kolsch, the space worm. Oh, we got the foil card there. Uh oh, is that a tattoo or? The gloves make it difficult for me to feel the texture of that and understand what I'm holding. It could be a sticker. Oh, it is, it's a sticker. Oh, cute. I like it. Great great job, Doug. We'll set that there. We'll open up the next pack. How about that? Let's do it. Beautiful people. Webtown. My people. My people. My people. To quote Mr. Tenable himself. You know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Filling it. Filling it. Filling it. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Great job, Doug. Okay. Let's get to what really matters here. The stretch gold cards. The tattoo foil and lenticular. I think there's like uh, actually hand-drawn cards maybe possibly. Throwing in chase cards. Inserted one in every 12 packs. I don't know. I made that part up. I don't know. What the actual insertion rate is of Doug Tenaple. If you know Doug Tenaple's insertion rate, please uh, put it in the comments below. Booyah. Okay, we got a we got a great tattoo right there. Look at that. That is great. In particular, uh, a metal card, a foil card. We got a foil card there with Queen What's-Her-Name. And the lenticular card. What is that one? There we go. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. He got hit with a sandwich. Ha, ha. Ah, classic. Anyway. This, ladies and gentlemen, has been a look at the making of Earthworm Jim, the $25 Indiegogo campaign. And it was worth every penny. I mean, I don't really care about the cards or whatever. The, the temporary tattoo's fun. Uh, I, I, I like the patch. But, uh, yeah, the book. That's what I was in it for. I bought it for the book. Buy it for the book. 
screw the gimmicks. Um, I think people do too many gimmicks. Uh, gimmicks lead to catastrophe. Um, adding pages to your book leads to catastrophe. Don't do any of that. Just put out your, your book. Do something simple. One trading card. Uh, one patch, I guess, if you want to do that. I personally think magnets are the way to go. Because then you put it on the... Then that person puts it on their fridge. And then when their friends come over, they ask, What's that? What's that cool thing there? So you got to have something cool. you got to have a cool character. But uh, that's the way to go, I think. So anyway, we're going to be back next Wednesday and every Wednesday to talk about another independent comic book I picked up on one or another crowdfunding site, either Indiegogo or Kickstarter. I hope you'll join me then, and I hope that you will back my book. It's not a comic book. It's a, it's a real book. You can get it digitally for cheap, or you can get it in, in paperback form. It's called The Young Barbarians, available through the Lost Library on Amazon.com. It's cheap, and it supports your boy Crypto. And uh, it's a good story. If you like, if you like fantasy, you're gonna like the Young Barbarians. Thanks for watching.